In this video, we're looking at a Venturi flow meter, and a Venturi flow meter is a device for measuring the rate of fluid flow in a pipe. What we do is put a constriction in there, and that causes the fluid velocity to increase in the constricted section. We can then use the pressure difference between the large and small sections in order to calculate the flow rate through the pipe. And I did this in a previous video where we just used a generic sort of pressure gauge to measure the pressure difference between these two points. In this video, we're turning it around a little bit. So we know the flow rate in the pipe already, and we're interested in computing the pressure difference between these two sections in the pipe. And then the way we're measuring this is just with open tubes. So these are basically open tube manometer measurements. And we should be able to figure out what's the height difference between those two columns of water in the open tubes based on that pressure difference that we compute in part A. And in part A, our strategy is going to be to use the flow rate equation, the flow rate in cubic meters per second is going to be the cross-sectional area multiplied by the velocity. And this will allow us to find the velocity in each part of the pipe. And then we're going to apply Bernoulli's equation and we should be able to get the pressure. So first I'm going to get the cross-sectional area in each part of the pipe. And we're a little short on space, so I'll put it in this area over here. And A1, that's this cross-sectional area for the diameter of 2.8 centimeters. Well, area is pi r squared but it's a lot nicer if we just write it in step one as one quarter pi diameter squared. When you replace r with d over two, you end up with that one quarter out in front. And I get one quarter pi, and then converting to meters here, 0 0.028 meters squared. And for that first cross-sectional area, I get 6.158 times 10 to the negative four square meters and then we'll do our second cross-sectional area that's the narrow section one quarter pi d2 squared that's one quarter pi times 0 0.016 meters for that second diameter all squared and this gives me 2.011 times 10 to the negative fourth square meters all right, so there's our cross-sectional areas. And then the last piece of prep work that I need to do is I need to convert this flow rate into cubic meters per second. So right now it's in liters per second. Well, there are a thousand liters in a cubic meter. So I can just tack on three zeros here and call this 0 0.000255 cubic meters per second. So we get back into part A and we're trying to find the fluid velocity in section one of the pipe, and that's gonna be the flow rate divided by A1. And if you follow the units here, we end up with meters per second, which is good. That's units of speed. And when I crunch the numbers on this, I get 0.414 meters per second. Again, that's the fluid speed in the large part of the pipe. We repeat the same calculation for the skinny section of the pipe, so flow rate over A2. And in this section, I get 1.268 meters per second. And of course it makes sense the fluid is traveling faster in the skinny section if we're going to pass the same amount of volume of fluid in each part of the pipe per second it must be flowing faster in the narrow part to do that. Now we're going to apply Bernoulli's equation and I'll post a link real quick to where that was first derived and this is a way of expressing the conservation of energy density in a fluid. And if I'm comparing the fluid in the fat section of the pipe to the skinny section of the pipe there is no height difference there. So that's out of the picture. But what I can do is solve for the pressure difference. And I know that P1 is going to be bigger because the fluid is traveling slower there. So more of the energy is in the pressure system instead of the kinetic system. So I'm going to write it like this, P1 minus P2. And I know I'm going to get a positive result. And I'm going to take this second kinetic term and move it over to the right-hand side. And I'm going to factor out the one-half row. So I get one half rho V2 squared minus V1 squared. And now I can plug in the density of water, which is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And the difference in the squares of my two speeds. Into three sig figs here, I get a pressure difference of 718 pascals, meaning that the pressure is 718 pascals higher in the fat section of the pipe than it is in the skinny section. Finally, I want to get the height difference of the two water columns in these open tubes. So at the top of each of these water columns, I have atmospheric pressure. And then if I travel downward through this first water column until I get to this point where I'm inside of the pipe, 
that's P1, downward through the second water column until they end up inside of the pipe, that's P2. And we relate those pressures to the height of the column through our pressure at a depth formula. So the pressure at the bottom of that first column is going to be atmospheric pressure plus rho times G times H1, where H1 is the depth in the fluid. And the pressure at point 2 is atmospheric pressure plus rho G H2. Now you could say we can just work in gauge pressure, in which case we treat atmospheric pressure as zero, but it doesn't really matter in this case. What we're trying to get is a height difference, H1 minus H2. So I can just take my top equation and subtract the bottom equation, and I end up on the left side with a P1 minus P2. The atmospheric pressure terms cancel out anyway, and I'm going to go ahead and do some factoring as I write down my new right-hand side here, rho G times the quantity H1 minus H2. So H1 minus H2 is going to be the pressure difference. That was 718 pascals divided by rho G. And I plug in all the numbers here. I get 718 pascals divided by 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter for the density of water, 9.8 meters per second squared for G. And I'll just trust the units this time. This should come out to meters. Um, if you're curious how it comes out to meters, you would start by replacing the pascals with newtons per meter squared. And then a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. And it should simplify to meters. And the most appropriate units for our final answer would be centimeters. So 7.33 centimeters. And we're done. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, Click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.